and welcome to the second week of Minnesota Rocks, the St. Paul International Stone Carving Symposium. Today is May 31st. We have been at this site, the St. Paul College Lawn in St. Paul, since the 22nd of May, with 14 artists from throughout Minnesota and the world, eight foreign countries, here carving sculptures from big blocks of Minnesota stone. We had a very adventuresome week last week as the artists chose their stones. Some of them chose to work in granite and most in limestone. They were able to get set up with their tools and to begin working. And you can see how much progress they have made. Here to help you understand what the artists are doing is Mark Wickstrom, who is the apprenticeship coordinator for the uh, bricklayers and allied trades of Minnesota and North Dakota. He's going to take you on a tour of the symposium site to meet the artists and find out what they're doing, why they're doing it, and the progress that they're making. Hi, Mark. Hi. Yeah, it was an interesting week last <laughs> week. Um, we've got about six artists that we didn't get to with our interviews yet, so uh, we're going to go try to go around to those people and interview them and also check the progress on some of the other artists. And later on, we have a special guest coming, don't we, Christine? Yeah, we do. Uh, Steve Hedstrom from Hedstrom Landscape and Masonry Supplies is going to be here to tell us about the different stones that the artists are working with so that you can understand the geology that is involved here as well as how these stones are quarried. So we're looking forward to hearing from Steve. And let's go. Yeah, let's okay. go check it out. We're here with Dwayne Goodwin, and he's a member of the uh, uh, White Earth, uh, White Lake, uh, White, White Earth Indian White Band, uh, Ojibwe uh, Indian, and uh, he's our Native, Native American carver, and uh, we're, we're stopping by to look at his progress he's made on his piece of uh, limestone here, and uh, I talked to Dwayne earlier, he's been using this as one of his main tools. This is a grinder, and it's got a nine inch blade on it. And, uh, you know, to hold this thing out all day long in a certain position, it's very strenuous on your arms. Uh, plus, a lot of times these carvers, they have to work without a guard so you can get the proper depth. Is that correct? Yeah. And then the, the guard, if it's on there, it also interferes with your ability to make a judgment on Yeah, it is. And, and, and you can't get a, a flat surface cut. Uh -huh. It just uh, gets in the road. So you're working with a very dangerous tool. And, uh, you, know, you gotta you gotta watch it every every second of the way while you're cutting. How, how long would you say a, a blade like that would last you doing? Uh, this one here uh, will probably go 50 hours. 50 hours. Okay. Then it's time for a new blade and new uh, new parts to hold it on. Okay. And then a blade. Uh, what's a ballpark figure for? I price? think the blades are right around 40, 50, maybe 60 bucks. Okay. Uh, well, it, you know, we're looking at your piece here, and you've, you've made a tremendous amount of pro, uh, progress out of the raw block you started with. And uh, I just want to mention that uh, Dwayne did a special ceremony at the opening, uh, with a sage ceremony, where you, yeah. you blessed the stone with... Uh, blessed the stone smoke. with sage, and we smoked our pipes and showed respect towards the material that I was working with. Uh, but what I'd like uh, Dwayne to do now is maybe, he's got his model here, so we'd like him to talk a little bit about his concept and uh, where he sees it going uh, in the coming weeks here? Well, the concept was, was based on, uh, you know, showing respect, uh, uh, offering um, your, your tobacco and your burning your sage. Uh, so not only is the sculpture, you know, uh, uh, pleasant, gonna be pleasant to the eye, it's also gonna be functional because they'll be able to burn their sage in here when they want to, you know, pray and, and uh, show respect to, to life and to the earth and to what, whatever they may be pay, uh, 
uh, praying for that day. Uh, so anybody that wants to use this bowl, that's what you know. That's the that's the the significance of the bowl is to burn your sage and part of the ceremony to pay homage to, yeah. to many different things. Ma yeah, many different things, and uh, this is. If, if, it's kind of hard to see the rock now with all the scaffolding around it. Uh, I use the scaffolding for safety purposes, and also I can adjust it to the height of, mm -hmm. you know, of, uh, of the stone that I'm working with at the time. So it's necessary for me to have all the scaffolding around it. But when you pull away the, the scaffolding, and you, and you look at what I've done, I took away quite a bit of stone in the last week. Yeah. And it's all done with this this uh, this here tool. Uh, I have a uh, friends that, that come and help me uh, I cut the rock and they come behind me and they, they chip it away which is a big help so I don't have to stop and put the saw down and, and uh, chip it out it looks like you've removed approximately uh, 10 12 cubic feet of stone already off of this piece uh, by carving out this uh, mirroring mirroring what uh, you're gonna have off of your model your curve here so well what the, my my plan is to remove all the the negative space mm -hmm. that's, you know, in the way right now, till I get it down to the to the shape of this year model. So if you can look at it all the way around it, I'm gonna get that basic shape, and then I'll start working on the face. Well, uh, uh, wonderful, Dwayne. Uh, we're glad you took the time to share that with us, and uh, uh, we're gonna be stopping back next week and checking a little bit further on your progress. And uh, we appreciate you taking the time well, thank to you very give much. us an interview. Yeah. Thanks. Have a nice day. Yeah, you too. Yeah. Yeah, we're here today with Steve Hedberg. And uh, Steve is one of the main contributors for this event. Um, ponied up quite a bit of money for this event and uh, he's an expert on uh, stone as well so we're going to take a little trip around the symposium site here and we're going to talk about some different classifications of stone for you folks at home that maybe uh, don't understand a lot about material. So Steve, uh, you want to start out? Uh, we've got sure. a couple pieces here, one that Dwayne Gooden, Goodwin is working on uh, and uh, it looks like it's a limestone. You want to talk a little bit about sure. that? Sure. Well, Dwayne and also Lee behind us. Dwayne's from Bemidji and Lee's from China. And they're both working on uh, Winona Travertine, which is a dolomitic limestone from southeastern Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a really nice stone to carve. And, and I know they're, they're really having a, a good time doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the things about limestone that maybe a lot of folks at home don't realize is that uh, a limestone, if I'm not mistaken, has a natural cement in it. And that's kind of what holds the particulates together, the sediment that was used to create the, the material mm -hmm. over uh, you know, millions of years. Yep. Uh, but a calcareous-based uh, solution that uh, crystallizes and, and forms a binding agent in that material. Yeah, and dol dolomitic limestone also has, uh, is created with an infusion of salt water. So mm -hmm. the area over southern Minnesota at one time was an ocean. Uh -huh. It's hard to believe today, isn't it? Yep. Well, let's, should we go over and take a look at the next stone? Uh, yeah. We think we go over to the Cliffs Natural Stone, which is uh, from the Iron Range. And, and I'll tell you, that's, uh, that's an interesting stone. It's a sedimentary stone as well. Yeah, let's take a look. Well, Steve, we're, uh, we're here with some uh, real different material. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's a metamorphic stone. Uh, would you like to talk a little bit about this and where it comes from? Well, sure. This comes from the Iron Range, northern Minnesota up uh, actually by Hoyt Lakes. And it's a company called Cliffs Natural Stone, which is part of the mining companies up on the North Shore. And as you can see by the banding here, this is a sedimentary rock as well, uh, but it's been metamorphically changed. Back millions of years ago, there was a lava upwelling in the area, and it superheated the rock and changed it chemically. And it's, so it's a very, very hard stone. So when they're, they're working with this, it's a lot more of a challenge than it is to work with a softer limestone. Yeah, this can be uh, fairly unpredictable, I would imagine, and uh, a lot harder to work because well, of the... But it's also very unique because if you see the piece behind us, I don't know if it's if you can see with the shadows, but Michael from Ely, Minnesota, is actually carving a face for every artist in the symposium on that piece of stone. And, uh, and, and he's gonna be polishing them 
and it's going to really bring out some color that you can't see on the piece of stone as it exists today. Uh, I guess a question I had for you, Steve, is a rock like this typically uh, used to be just kind of rubble, uh, kind of a byproduct of the yep. mining process, and yep. it'd be pushed off to the side, correct? Well, actually, they, they wouldn't push it because there's just way too much of it to yep. push. What they would do is they would literally blast 100 feet or more of, they would call this rock overburden, just some material they had to strip out of the way to get to the ore bearing rock, and they would literally take it with great big trucks and dump it in huge piles, some of the piles being mile or more long mm -hmm. and hundreds of feet wide and, and hundreds of feet uh, tall as well. And those piles still remain. And there's three types of mining that, it, that exist in, in Minnesota. And, and this, when, you, when you're taking stuff out of a pile like that, you're, what you're doing is you're gathering stone. But they also have other types of stone quarrying opportunities up there available as well that we'll talk about later. Yeah, and this uh, material, uh, I've seen, had the occasion, the, the good fortune to see it when it's polished. Yes. And uh, it's absolutely breathtaking, uh, the colors that come out. It is, and they're starting to do polishing of that stone this year up there now. Mm -hmm. They're actually going to be making slabs for table, uh, table tops and counters and also tile uh, in the future up there. And there's so many beautiful varieties of stone that are, that are really highly sought after around the world because of their uniqueness and age. Well, uh, we've got a lot of material to get to, so we should perhaps okay. move along to our next class. How about Minnesota dolomite? Would that, or excuse me, Mankato Casota stone? Yeah, which is all from the same area, of southern Minnesota. Would that, uh, would that be fine? Sure, let's go. Let's talk go about right it. over here. Sorry about that. I'm not good right here. Well, here we go, Mark. Here's Pasquale from Italy, and he's carving the Mankato Casota stone, which is from southern Minnesota by Mankato. Mm -hmm. That's where it gets its name from. Mm -hmm. And there's actually more than one carver carving that stone here today. In addition to Pasquale, we also have Sa Sala, which is behind us. He's carving, and he's from Egypt. Mm -hmm. and, Cairo. Uh, and he's Yeah, Cairo, and he's carving uh, the, the Mankato Casota stone as well. Mm -hmm. And that is another uh, limestone, a sedimentary stone uh, from the southern Minnesota area. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing that might be interesting to, to people at home, too, is when these blocks first come out of the quarry, uh, they have a certain amount of moisture content called quarry sap, yeah. and that makes mm -hmm. them much more workable. And mm -hmm. as the stone sits out over a long period of time, it's going to get more and more brittle. Is that uh, correct? That's correct, yep. But this is interesting to see, you know, what he's done so far. He's, he's taken, and, and sometimes the artists here, they, they take the piece of stone, they have something in mind, and they carve what they want to out of it. Other times what they do is they look at the piece and let it speak to them as to what they want to carve out of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're seeing examples of both here today. It's kind of exciting. And sometimes uh, the stone actually tells the artist what uh, what can be made yeah. out of it. Or something will break. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. <laughs> that's right, that's part, of a, that's part of being an artist. You work with what you have and you make the most out of what you get. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's part of it. The, uh, the ability, the talent to, uh, to react. Yep, so, that's uh, right. Anyway, uh, should we move along to some granite? Well, let's do it. Let's not take it for granite, for goodness sakes. Okay. Well, well Steve, we moved along uh, to some granite here. We're, we're looking at a piece that Jürgen, our German uh, carver, is working on. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about this material and uh, the way it's formed and uh, well, how it's quarried. Sure, well granite is an igneous rock and as an igneous rock, it's, it, this igneous rock is formed beneath the earth uh, and it was formed many, many, many millions of years ago when this was actually a volcanic re region. And this rock comes from Cold Spring Granite Company and there's about three or I believe four maybe different Cold Spring materials here that come from different parts of Minnesota. And uh, we're just so fortunate to have Cold Spring Granite Company, a major fabricator and courier in the country located in Cold Spring, Minnesota. That's where their headquarters is. And this rock is very durable. It's uh, got a lot of character. It's used a lot in commercial construction as well as monuments. And, uh, and then we're getting some beautiful carvings out of it today. Um, we're just very fortunate to, to be able to work with it. It, it splits nice easily. It's got some little sparkle in it. 
and uh, and it's uh, you know just amazing. We're, we've got such a great site here to walk around and and a lot of room to to uh, to really get involved with the stone. One uh, one uh, point that granite has over the other materials is it's uh, it's got a low porosity rate because of its hardness. And a real basic recipe for this material is uh, uh, one of three different kinds of feldspar. You've got some quartz in there, mm -hmm. and you've got some uh, usually some biotite, which is a thin mica material, yep, right which is a black uh, flex in there. Mm -hmm. But when you break this uh, material on a fracture, you, you often get uh, very reflective light off of different angles, the way the material has been embedded in there inside the molten mass that mm -hmm. crystallized. Well, it's it's especially noticeable when it's been polished. Yeah, exactly. Because it makes it polishes just beautifully. And here they're using it, leaving it split, which is a nice character itself. I'm sure some of it will be polished as well, mm -hmm. depending on what the artist is trying to accomplish. Uh -huh. And one thing about granite, too, is when you carve something in granite, the permanence involved in that. Mm -hmm. uh, because it is such a durable material, you're looking at uh, a piece of sculpture that might be around three or 400 years. Well, just stone itself. Stone, mm -hmm. and Minnesota stone is hard stone. It's timeless in, in its beauty and timeless in its permanence. So we, you know, we just wish that more people would understand in Minnesota how lucky we are because other parts of the country are well aware of our stone and people in Minnesota aren't as, as aware as, as they are uh, around the country. I traveled in uh, Europe and worked in uh, Germany and France and uh, basically everywhere I went they knew about Cold Spring mm -hmm. Granite. Uh, yeah. I mean they are world uh, renowned they are. for their the ability to supply materials. So. Mm -hmm. Anyway, should we move on to... Uh... Well, you know, that's the main types of stone here. There are definitely a lot of different carvings being done from this stone, and there are 14 sculptors from around the world that are, are here today and for, for the next uh, five weeks mm -hmm. uh, carving stone here. And we're just so fortunate to have them take the time to come here and be with us and to, and to uh, show us what some of the additional beauty that's involved in Minnesota stone that we don't see in our in our commercial buildings. We see in our landscapes. We see in, in water features. We see in pathways, patios, uh, monuments, headstones, all over the place. And we're so lucky to have that all here. Well, it seems to me, Steve, just uh, from talking to you, that uh, you, you've got a pretty charmed life because you, you actually have a, a very sound business, but you also get to sell something that you really believe in and you really love. I'm a passionate rock guy. Oh yeah. That's uh, yep. Well, we need more people like that. Yep. We're here with uh, Atsuo Okamoto, and uh, he is our artist representing Japan, and. Uh, He's, uh, I've had the opportunity to view some of his works, and uh, he's a phenomenal artist. And uh, maybe he can tell us a little bit about the two materials that he's working in and what your plan is for these pieces. I know one here is a limestone you're working in. Yeah. And then this piece here, could you tell us a little bit about it? This piece uh, come, came from the Minnesota, and uh, I heard the... Uh, almost a two billion years old stone oh, it's yeah. so the, i felt the something the, so a lot of memory so i i mean the 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 all the so the how to say the uh, animal and the, uh, every life's the history, history of, of life in, yeah. in the stone heads exactly yeah and so i don't want to carve this stone uh -huh. yeah so you're going to leave it intact? Yeah, okay. just just leave it in the just negative form, the opposite form. I cut out, take take out, okay. and uh, I put into the many a kind of the culture, culture stone. You know, the, the some part of the how to say the step, mm -hmm. uh, step edge. Uh, I, I, a kind of stone furniture. Steps or, or levels of Level, uh, stone. Yeah, yeah. And I put into other another stone. Okay. I filled up another stone that, that negative form. Uh, my understanding of it is he's going to create a collage of different types of stone inside of this uh, void that he's carved in here. And there's going to be some water involved in your uh, 
No, no, you're a piece of sculpture? Or that you just got that for drainage in there, basically. Your, your holes in the in the stone yeah. there? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, it's gonna be a fabulous piece. And uh, speaking with him earlier, I, I found out you're gonna bury this piece in the ground down Yes. about yeah. this much showing? Yes, okay. Yeah, it's gonna be an interesting yeah. piece. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and uh, that profile is to match this profile. That's yes. gonna remain unchanged. Yes. Okay, yeah. Oh, what an interesting piece. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, how do you feel about the symposium so far? Are you having a good time? Yeah, yeah. The, it's quite uh, the interesting symposium there because so many countries, artists uh, participated in the, in the weather also, the very beautiful weather, a little bit hot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Sometimes it's too much hot. <laughs> mm -hmm. But okay. uh, so the many, uh, every the citizen and every, every people is so kindly and, uh, and uh, every night we talk about uh, culture and the symposium and the people, they all over the world. But, yeah, for example, the, 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 the one person who participated from Egypt, uh -huh. he speaks so the kind of Egypt culture and the, I speak Japanese culture and the other person people, the German and the uh, Finland culture, we talk about many things. Yeah, it's a kind of symposium I feel. So there's a whole other level of communi communication back at the yes, house where right. you're staying at yeah. amongst all the artists. Yes, yeah. right. Oh, that's very interesting. Uh, yeah. We're going to be stopping back later on. Uh, probably, maybe even next week, we might stop back and see if uh, how your progress is going. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the interview. Thank you. You bet. Good luck. Yeah. There are three different kinds of quarrying. There is uh, ledgestone quarrying, there's block quarrying, and there's gathering. We talked a little bit earlier about some of the cliff stone that has been gathered off of piles. This I'm sitting on right now, this block of granite is an example of block quarrying. There's more than one way that block quarrying is accomplished. Here what they've done is they've actually drilled down into the granite in the ground they put an expanded material in there that then, when they, when they put a small charge to it, it, it literally just kind of opens the earth up and then they lift this piece of, of granite out and take it to the fabrication shop where it's taken and sliced up like a loaf of bread by either a wire saw or a gang saw or uh, just a great, great big diamond blade. So this is one way it's done. Also, you'll see in block quarrying, sometimes on a softer stone, they'll actually take a saw that will go in a, on a track into the ground and will run the, run the length of the area that they're cutting, and they'll literally cut it out of the ground, the blocks out of the ground. Then they come in with a great big loader, and they, they wiggle them, lift them out, and then again take them to the shop for, for the fabrication. The, uh, the next kind of quarrying is leadstone quarrying. And we don't see much leadstone quarrying in Minnesota. You'll see a lot of that in, in eastern Wisconsin. 
uh, that's where you're actually taking the rock and prying the layers apart, a uh, sedimentary rock. And it's a lot less costly way of quarrying, but you really have to have the right type of material uh, to do that. A slate or, or a limestone primarily are, are what you end up with leadstone quarrying. The uh, gathered stone we see the most of in Minnesota are the Minnesota glacial boulders and field stone. Farmers used to get so upset when they had to pick all that rock off their field and now they actually think of it as another crop off the ground. So that is a gathered stone because you're literally just picking it up, gathering it up, piling it up, and then, then transporting it to the marketplace. So I, I, I hope that uh, gives you a little feel of uh, quarrying of stone in Minnesota. Hello, Lourdes. Hey, Bart. How are you How doing are you? today? All right. Uh, we're here today with Lourdes Q, and uh, she's originally from Mexico City, and uh, now you're in uh, Minneapolis or St. Paul? For the last 14 years, I've been living in Minneapolis. Okay. Now, Lourdes is our only female carver in the symposium, and uh, perhaps uh, you can tell us a little bit about the stone you selected and maybe a little bit about what you hope to uh, accomplish here with this piece. I usually work with a uh, uh, triptychs mm -hmm. of a few pieces okay. and I'm trying to do uh, our canoes mm -hmm. that are coming out from the natural stone okay. and they're going to be placed in the ground with movement. They're, uh, you know, like waves. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe one is coming out, the other one is coming into the ground okay. and the other one is just sliding towards the river. I have my sight. Okay. And, uh, so these uh, canoes are going to be bobbing naturally on the, on the water surface. Uh, not on the ground. Uh, yeah, on but the, I mean uh, to simulate. Uh, absolutely, like, like water, that's yeah. the idea. Exactly. Yeah, well, you know, we have a lot of lakes, rivers in Minnesota, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good theme. Good yeah. theme. Uh, could you describe what you were just doing uh, when we uh, we got some action shots? Here? You were running a, a rock drill, or uh, uh, in preparation for plugs and feathers, you're going to uh, split the uh, stone. Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm taking off little by little to control the shape okay. and I don't need to go all the way with the drill because uh, the, the wedges are small so okay. it's a lot of work to push all the way in. Mm -hmm. So just enough for the splitters to go in mm -hmm. and take out or take off what I don't want. Mm -hmm. okay. um, yeah, and perhaps we could look at this tool. Uh, we got a special type of bit on that, uh, isn't there? It's a carbide, I believe. Carbide substance, yep, okay. something like that. Uh -huh. That is for granite. Uh -huh. And it, uh, it's pulverizing the material and digging it out. Right. So to receive uh, plugs and feathers. Absolutely. Um, so basically what you're looking at is uh, a three-piece, much like your sculpture, three pieces. Right. Um, you've got two shims and a plug. And once you drill a hole, then you're going to insert these, uh -huh. and you're going to you're going to drive these in, and eventually that stone is going to crack along that line you've All created. Right. I think it's easier than with the grinder. It takes a long time because the granite is a little harder. Mm -hmm. So I think the drill is working perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I imagine it's with uh, 
other art forms, you get used to working with a particular tool or technique and you can really move along at a pretty good clip when you're doing the plug and feather technique. Yep, I think so. Uh, how do you feel about the symposium so far? Oh, I think it's been a very interesting experience. It's always uh, a learning experience to work along with other artists, other ideas that they bring. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to see them work is fabulous. It sounds like you're getting some pretty uh, good uh, friendships forged out of the group as well. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> well, that's nice to, that's nice to know. Uh -huh. Well, um, thanks for giving us a little bit of your time and talking about your piece. Uh, we're going to be stopping back every week okay. during the symposium and checking on your progress. Absolutely. Come back and, again. And hopefully uh, you'll be able to give us a little more details on okay. it. Okay. Thanks. Okay, Bart. Yep. Thank you. Oh.